Happy Christmas, everyone. Wherever you are today and wherever you're spending the day, I pray that you'll be have a wonderful time as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ together. We come to the last of our Advent uh, reflections this morning on Christmas Day with the thought of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. It's a great title, isn't it? It's one we find in Isaiah chapter 9 with that great messianic prophecy about the nature and the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we're honest, Christmas Day is far from peaceful for many of us. It's full of people. It's full of activity, full of noise, full of excitement. And if you've got young kids running around, it's, it's chaotic as well as everything else. Yet for others of us, of course, the phrase, we're having a quiet Christmas this year, is something that perhaps some of us long for, some of us really enjoy. But for others, it may not be out of choice. This is a time when loss and loneliness are very real for many people. And it's even more acute when others seem to have people around them and families there and seem to be having a great time. So it's good that we spend a bit of time thinking about those who perhaps uh, for them, this is not that great time of joy that it is for all the rest of us. The idea of God's peace, though, is much more than the absence of noise or busyness or even the sense of solitude that some have chosen and others have reluctantly forced upon them this Christmas. The Bible concept of peace or shalom is something far more profound and wonderful. It's a longing, it's a desire, and it's a truth about a restored relationship between God and his creation, a, a relationship between us as human beings and our Father in heaven. As Hart the Herald Angels, the great Carol says, it's a time when we remember God and sinners reconciled. So this idea of peace in the Bible is about our wholeness, our wellness and the order and stability of life. In this world of war, threats of war, of uncertainty and fear, of brokenness and pain, that really is a very welcome gift. And what Jesus, the Prince of Peace, offers everyone this Christmas is that priceless gift. Peace with God. The thing about Christmas for many of us is that, you know, we receive and we get presents. And, uh, you know, I suppose that um, it depends on how rich we are or how much money we've got as to what size of present that is and how much money is spent and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. For some poorer families, of course, there's a real struggle to live up to the adverts on the television. The debts increase. There's real pressure to put stuff on the table that uh, uh, we see as, the, as you know, we should do at Christmas and, and to provide the presents for our families. But the thing about God's peace, the gift of peace that God offers us at Christmas is that God treats us all equally, rich or poor. The same gift is on offer. It's a gift that doesn't depend on whether we've been naughty or nice. It's a gift that we can't even buy should we want to. It's a gift available to everyone. And this offer of peace is not just something that is here today and gone tomorrow. It's not based on our circumstances. Um, It's not there for our good days and not there for our bad days. It's not a gift that ever wears out, that ever is broken, that we grow out of. In fact, the offer of peace that God gives us at Christmas is an eternal peace. It's a peace that God gives that offers us the true hope of eternal life in heaven. But I guess like every gift, we have to choose to receive it. God's gift of peace is waiting for us all to unwrap. It's found not at the foot of a tree, but at the foot of the cross where Jesus died for the sins of the world. But it's a gift that has your name and my name written on it. And a gift that is offered to us. Will we take it this Christmas? In the Bible, we read these words in Romans chapter 5. St Paul writes, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. 
So in every man terms, basically, Paul is saying to us, if we will truly believe that Jesus Christ has died for our sins and we receive the gift of salvation that he freely offers us, that's not based on our own abilities, our own merits, but upon his, we will know this gift of peace with God and the promise that it brings of eternal life. This is such good news. It's the best news you'll ever hear. No wonder the angels sang to the shepherds on that first Christmas night, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. I trust you and yours and your family and uh, will know the favour and the peace of God this Christmas. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus Christ. Thank you that through your death, Lord Jesus, and resurrection, we can know this gift of peace of God for ourselves. Now may God give us his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and in the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with all of us, always. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone.